In the studio, Dr Emma Kasser, Commissioner for Corrections. Good morning. Good morning, Neil. How are you? I'm okay. So you're confirming it was Tony Mockbell stabbed? Yes, I can confirm that. What's his condition? Uh, so the information that I have is that he's in a critical but stable uh, condition. So is that life-threatening? Uh, nothing that I've been... Uh, thank you. Uh, told his, is leading me to believe it's life-threatening. Uh, he did have surgery last night uh, and uh, all accounts from uh, the hospital are that he is in a stable condition. What about the other man that's stabbed? Who's he? Uh, so he is in the Geelong Hospital uh, and again a stable condition. Are you willing to say who that is? Uh, at this stage, no. What's the relationship between the two men? We're still piecing that together. Uh, Neil, if it's helpful, I'm happy to talk through the incident. We had uh, really good CCTV uh, coverage of it uh, and I saw the um, uh, footage last night uh, and uh, so that has been handed to Victoria Police, which should really uh, assist in terms of the the promptness and the rigour of the investigation. So uh, the incident uh, took place just after 3.40 and uh, Tony Mockbell was walking back, heading towards the Diosme unit. The Diosme unit, uh, as you might be aware, is in the mainstream compound at Barwon Prison. Uh, He was approached by uh, two people, uh, two prisoners who um, assaulted him, uh, knocked him to the ground uh, and you can see the footage very clearly showing a a number of stabbing actions. Uh, Another prisoner did come to uh, Tony Mockbell's aid it seems uh, and he was also injured. Uh, In terms of the relationship between those two people, uh, it's too early to tell. Does the CCTV footage identify the attackers? Yes, it does. Uh, And they were separated within moments uh, and are being interviewed by police uh, and my staff uh, throughout the course of today. Uh, Separated and put where? uh, Into the high security unit. And there's only two attackers? At this stage, yes. That's all we can see on the footage. Uh, What we'll be doing uh, throughout the course of today is really looking at uh, who else is is involved. uh, And that's something that I can't really talk more about for operational reasons. Both armed? Uh, you can certainly see both have uh, homemade weapons uh, and I can say that we have found three homemade weapons uh, and I can talk about um, you know, what, what, what these are if that's helpful. Sure. Uh, so homemade I mean, prisoners will go to great lengths to look at uh, what they can use uh, for weapons. And, you know, we've seen instances in the past of you know, uh, tree sticks, uh, toothbrush, uh, hair combs uh, and pens uh, and that's the type of uh, implement that was used. Where were the three weapons found? Uh, in close proximity. In the area of the state. Yes, yes, okay. and they've been bagged and handed over to Victoria Police. Given what's been reported, uh, were the uh, attackers of Islander appearance? Yes, they were. Is this a power play within the prison? Um, too early to tell, Neil. Uh, we'll be uh, looking at that very closely. Um, there is, uh, you know, as you know, the media have um, portrayed the uh, link between the article on Sunday uh, and this matter. Um, at this stage, it's too early to tell for us, and, and you know, any comment that I make would be speculation. The article on Sunday in the Herald Sun, Sunday Herald Sun, reported that Mockbell had become an enforcer and was in dispute with a, a gang of islanders. That's the, the correct uh, summary of the article, is it? Yeah, that's. I mean, that was the article on Sunday, yes. But you're not saying whether that's accurate or not? No. At this stage, you know, it's under 24 hours since the incident. We need time to really look at that uh, and to uh, interview the, the two uh, suspects and the broader uh, cohort who may or may not be involved. I mean, there's also been speculation that's been linked to his uh, involvement with Lawyer X. Mm. Uh, is that being investigated as well? Um, we, we'll consider that. Uh, at this stage, I've not seen anything to, to um, give me any indication that that is the case. Uh, but again, too early to tell at this stage. Do you know whether he'd been boasting that he was about to get out of jail? Tony Mockbell? Yes, I mean, he, he was uh, uh, very confident he would get out of jail. Was that irritating other prisoners? Um, I suspect it probably was. Mm. Was it, Did your, your um, intelligence unit was aware of tension between these groups, uh, between Mockbell and his group and the islanders? So our intelligence unit work really hard uh, and they re- review and assess all uh, intelligence, be it from other prisoners, uh, from, you know, external sources and internal sources. Um, and, you know, as a matter of course, you know, we have strict procedures in place uh, following, you know, articles like uh, the one that appeared on Sunday in terms of welfare check, security reassessment. All those processes were done. OK, so the article is seen and then, then you step up security. Uh, we reassess mm. uh, both the security requirements for the individual uh, and the risk assessment, yes. Well, but did that article come as a surprise or were you aware of some tension? Uh, no, we, we were not consulted on that article. Uh, no, no, I know, but were you aware of what was going on? Um, there's always uh, things that we have to keep on top of, Neil. You know, they're, they're busy places uh, and we would assess, you know, thousands of pieces of intelligence and information. This would be just one. But did the article surprise you? Um, the... Some of the information um, was, you know, of interest to us. Uh, was it a surprise? Uh, no. 
Now, there are obviously similarities with the Carl Williams attack. The newspaper publication comes out, then there's an attack. Uh, do you think there's a significance there? Um, there are similarities in terms of they're both high-profile prisoners. Uh, in terms of their placement, uh, there is no similarity. One was in a high-security unit, uh, one was in a mainstream compound, uh, one was clearly providing information to police. Uh, in terms of Tony Moppel, it would be inappropriate for me to make a comment about that. Uh, so they, there are similarities, uh, but nothing at this stage to lead us to say that they are linked or um, uh, aligned. Why was Mockbell not in higher security? Why was he in mainstream? His, his security requirements didn't require high security. Well, uh, so he, did. he he was a high security prisoner uh, in the early phases, uh, but again, you know, as as you know, you've, you've seen and uh, witnessed firsthand, we are a system that tries to progress people through, uh, and Tony Mockbell has been housed safely in the mainstream compound at Bowen for a number of years without issue. How often is that reviewed? That sort of security situation? regular regularly. Uh, is the jail still tense about the, after this? The, is the jail still tense? Mm. The jail's been locked down. Uh, so still in lockdown? Still in lockdown and uh, will remain in lockdown until uh, we uh, source some further information, interview some uh, prisoners and make an informed decision about, you know, fact and evidence. I know you're right across it, but is it a dangerous time within the jail? At this point? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Uh, I mean, the staff have done a terrific job, the response, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, rendering assistance and aid to, to uh, Tony Mockbell was, you know, first class, uh, and they work really hard and are very experienced at uh, the, the mop-up of these type of incidents to ensure everyone is safe. Could it be, uh, could other prisoners be at risk? Uh, that's why we will remain in lockdown until we understand who else is connected, who else may be at risk, uh, and if there's any reprisal attacks that are likely to occur. Presumably, there's, if it is to do with a, a tension between two groups, Islander Group and the Mockbell Group, there are, there are people on both sides still within Correct. the jail. Correct, yes. And, and we'll need you... to make a, a really uh, quick decision on their placement and their management, which we're doing at the moment. Does that mean you could move them or you just put them into higher security? They may be, they may be moved, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, can prisoners sue for compensation after being injured for something like this? Yes, so there is a quarantine fund, uh, but I think it's. I want to make it very clear that uh, any money that goes into that fund, uh, once it's it's issued, uh, the victim or victims have access to that first within the first twelve months. Uh, so, but I think at this stage, uh, Neil, it's probably too early to uh, talk about uh, matters like that. It doesn't say a lot for the security of our system, though, does it? That over an, over an, only a few years, we've got one high-profile prisoner murdered in jail and a second one uh, very seriously injured in jail. Um, Neil, I think my staff do a great job in terms of managing the risks and the issues. Uh, we deal with over 8,000 of Victoria's toughest uh, prisoners. Um, now, I'm, uh, th these sort of incidents are unacceptable, uh, and for me, it's a real worry that this has occurred. Uh, so we're doing everything we can, uh, and we will um, certainly uh, wait for the Victorian Police investigation, and then uh, my team will investigate, and there'll be an external review into this to ensure that if there's any learnings or failings on the system's part, that we take those things very seriously. Um, I think you said you, the incident was 3.40, so what, you're in lockdown by about 3.45, 3.50, something like that? Approximately. Yeah. Um, Craig Minogue, who the Russell Street bomber, is also a prisoner in Barwon, mm. uh, has sent out a message, well, it's in his name, claimed mm. to be in his name. Now, I'll read it to you. I'd stress mm. this is nonsense. That's not the point of it. Mm. It says, quote, The Prison Intelligence Unit and Victoria Police have had Tony Mockbell attacked in prison today. This is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, unquote. I mean, I, I accept that's clearly nonsense. The point is... How would he get a message out like that if you're in lockdown? Uh, Neil, I think we, sp we spoke about this last time. Uh, so uh, I can make it absolutely clear that uh, prisoners do not have access to the internet, nor do they have access to Twitter. Uh, the, the prisoner you mentioned um, uh, has been using a third party uh, to uh, relay his, his tweets. Uh, we have expressed a view time and time again at uh, how distasteful that is. Uh, unfortunately, there is no laws broken uh, in this. So, um, uh, But that... if you're in lockdown, he wouldn't have access to a phone, so would he? he has been very cunning and as soon as the incident occurred, jumped on the phone in the course of the lockdown uh, and within moments uh, relayed that. Uh, again, exceptionally distasteful why the staff and other prisoners are trying to cooperate and preserve life. So he's actually done it while mock bells effectively on the ground being worked on? Indeed. Uh, does it irritate your prison intelligence unit to be accused of being involved in this or are they just used to dealing with that sort of stuff? Uh, we, I think my team are some of the most robust people uh, they are used to uh, dealing with uh, some colourful criticism. Uh, they're a highly professional team who do a, a terrific job with a, a really good intelligence system. Is Minogue punished for this or not? 
Um, we, we'll investigate this as the course of uh, uh, the broader investigation uh, and I'm happy to come back to you with that. Thank you very much for your time. No worries. Thank you, Neil. Dr Emma Kassar, the Commissioner for Corrections, 96900 693 13 13 32.